are going from child star to adult artist. I mean, we've seen artists do this from Britney and Slay for you, Miley yes. Can't Be Tamed. Like, yes. how is this era going to feel for you to just finally let it go and be who That's, you authentically are? No one has made this dramatic of a change yet. No one has made, in my generation, this extreme of a switch. I am the first in the generation. It is very scary. But I can't wait to go home. Come in the as I was getting ready for this video, I was like, what would it sound like if Miley Cyrus sang the song? I can't do a Miley Cyrus impression. She did reference Britney Spears. Come as a bitch, I should have known better. <laughs> I would have never asked around. Wait, that was actually kind of good. <laughs> okay, can we get a Jojo Siwa, Karma's a bitch, Britney Spears remix? Shout out. I think that would actually go hard. So today we're talking about Jojo Siwa. I am wearing my bad girl outfit today. Can we get a little commotion for the bodysuit? Listen, any wrong move and this is quickly getting demonetized. I am wearing a bra because I don't want this to turn into an OF because it could happen very quickly. I hope y'all can't see my cooch. I am giving side thigh a little bit. You know what she says, if you could see it from the front, wait till you see it from the back. Nobody is seeing it from the back today. Uh, last time I wore this, I was in a nightclub in Berlin. And I was definitely doing some bad girl tings, okay? Things Jojo Siwa wouldn't even imagine. Lord. Or maybe she, I don't know what she gets up to on her free time. Like Tanamojo said, has she, has she popped a perk 30? I would love to know. I was a bad girl. I'm doing bad things. You think she's ever taken like a perk 30 and like cussed somebody out? <laughs> <laughs> it's not really giving that, but that's okay. Anyway, so today we're talking about Jojo Siwa and her rebrand. And I wanted to kind of get my tinfoil conspiracy hat on for a second because I do think she is low key trolling us. <laughs> but that's not even tinfoil hat conspiracy because she's kind of already said that. No one knows everything, but like four people. It's all choreographed, it's all planned, and uh, the world's only seen a little teeny tiny bit of the plan. Yeah. So I'm excited for them to get to see more, see what the full vision is, Right. because it really does paint a picture. Like it or not, what's been in your head the last three days? I was a bad girl. And some people are like, oh, she's just trying to save herself. I think two things can be true at once, but we'll dive we'll dive deep into that. I also wanted to compare her rebrand to Miley Cyrus, and I think that's fair because she has said multiple times that she's kind of having her, her bangers moment. She's gotten inspiration from people like Miley Cyrus to Freddie Mercury. She's got a whole wide array of influences. Her and Elvis are the only two people in the world who have ever taken a risk which is crazy, like that's icon behavior, okay? Elvis was the first to not be afraid to be different, to not be afraid to be out there, to not be afraid to take a risk. And she also was inventing gay pop. Sorry, Lady Gaga, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. I think Jojo Siwa is coming for your bag. Jojo Siwa, who is she? If you didn't already know, Jojo Siwa is a child star. She got her start on Dance Moms, the reality show where a big mean lady yells at little girls. She was like on the tail end of Dance Moms, so you may have missed her, but she went on to have a wildly successful solo career as a children's performer. She signed with Nickelodeon, appeared in movies and TV shows. She was on The Masked Singer and Dancing with the Stars. She was pretty much like a Gen Alpha's Hannah Montana. Her and Miley Cyrus really do have a lot in common, yet they are so different. <laughs> Since I'm not a child, I really couldn't tell you like the impact that Jojo Siwa had as an artist, but I can tell you the impact that she's had as a businesswoman slash entity. She has sold millions and millions, if not billions of units. I'm talking home decor, dolls, lunch boxes, pencils probably, hair bows, turkey basters, tampons. Well, maybe not the last two, but honestly, I wouldn't put it past her. I was honestly hoping that when she was in her like coming of age era, she would release like Jojo Siwa themed diva cups. I feel like that would work. I feel like it would sell. Jojo Siwa is, I mean, she built an empire by like 12 years old, pretending to be perpetually six. Like she has looked like she was a toddler up until like very recently. Like she was riding a bedazzled Segway until she was 18 years old, which 
I would have to think does something to you mentally. And we're going to get into the child stardom of it all and the trauma because she just did an interview with Alex Cooper on Call Her Daddy and it was very, very telling. So Jojo Siwa has been hinting, I think, at her being an adult for the past couple years now. And it really all started, I think, when she came out, which was a big deal. I mean, she's a child star, kid friendly, squeaky clean, cookie cutter pop star. And especially, again, because she is so heavily associated with children like she's a child's entertainer that was a very big deal for her to come out and I think it really was like a big move for her and I I was like surprised but I was like good for her like she's not hiding who she is I was still signed to Nickelodeon and president of the company was like so what are we going to tell the partners and I was like what do you mean well what are we going to tell like all the retailers like you need to have a call with all of them and reassure them that you like you're not going crazy and I was like Guys, I came out. I'm going to tell them that I'm happy now. And then I took a call. So that I had to take a call because my merchandise was everywhere. We Target, Walmart, Amazon. And they were all, we're so excited. We're so proud of you. Like, we're already thinking about pride this year. Like, what are we going to do with you? Like, this is awesome. And I remember the company being like, oh. Which, like, if society is more accepting of the gays, it is purely for capitalistic reasons and not for like the social equality and love of it all, you know? As long as you're bringing in dollars, if it's gay dollars, we don't care. So yes, she came out and she was like, I wanna have kids and all this stuff. And she really decided to like do her big one with this song, Karma, which is actually a song originally recorded by an artist named Britt Smith. And that song was allegedly scrapped and was actually pitched to Miley Cyrus back in like 2012, 2011, when she was, you know, embarking on her rebrand. Again, tying in the Miley Cyrus, Hannah Montana of it all. I mean, it's like, that is her twin. That is her twin flame, her soulmate. In 2012, one year after a Miley Cyrus fan account claimed they heard rumblings of a new song of hers called Karma's a B word. Sorry, YouTube censorship monetization, you know the deal. Cyrus tweeted production team Rock Mafia to not forget about her. Rock Mafia, made up of producers Tim James and Antonia Armato, replied to the Flowers artist in part with the hashtag Karma's a B word. And if you aren't familiar with Antonia Armato, you probably are, you just don't know it. At least if you're like Gen Z and grew up on Disney, cause she wrote like every Disney song. She wrote for Hannah Montana, she wrote for The Descendants, I think she wrote for Camp Rock and a bunch of other Disney productions. So what's interesting about that is like, Jojo Siwa is like breaking away from her child star image, but isn't at the same time because sonically, it's very similar to what you would hear on Disney Channel, even lyrically. I mean, I don't think 12 year olds on Disney Channel are saying karma's a B word, I should have never effed around. But the fact that she said effed around instead of just, you know, full sending it with the F-bomb is like really telling of where she's at in terms of this rebrand and the fact that she's like adultified, but not at all at the same time. It just, it's kind of like how even down to her costumes, I mean, everyone said, she hasn't really changed up her style. She's just changed the color scheme and has, she's just ditched the pink and the neon for monochromatic outfits instead. She went from like sparkly pink bows to like a bedazzled mohawk. And the music video, the music video was how you say, um, raunchy? <laughs> uh, no, I think the mute word I was looking for was cringy. I don't know what that was. I was very scared. I was really scared. Maybe disturbed is a better word. I wasn't afraid of Jojo Siwa. I was just, honestly concerned. I don't know who let her do this. Anyway, I think the real meme of it all, aside from the song and the music video, is the press that she's done around this rebrand, you know. Dream guest on my podcast? Oh my gosh. I mean, honestly, let's spice things up. One of my exes. Oh? <laughs> Dream guest on my podcast? Oh my gosh. I mean, honestly, let's spice things up. One of my exes. <laughs> <laughs> she can't say a word without being turned into a meme. Similar to JLo, who I actually made a video about on my Patreon, so go check that out. It was meant for the main channel, but I didn't want to do a JoJo Siwa and JLo back-to-back -back video. It just seemed like a lot. So if you want to watch that video, it's got the full main channel edit, like all the bells and whistles. It's 27 minutes. If you want to check out my Patreon for bonus videos and early access to content, link is below. Like I referenced before, she's said that she's like inventing this new genre of gay pop 
which she knows that's not true because she did reference Lady Gaga as one of her influences. But I guess this is her version. I don't know what she really meant by that. I wanted to start a new genre of music. And they said, what do you mean? And I said, well, it's called gay pop. Songs like Applause by Lady Gaga. It's the On My Own Miley Cyrus. Can't Be Tamed Miley Cyrus. Karma, it's that that world of music. It's no secret that my transition is heavily inspired by Miley Cyrus. She's like, nobody's doing it like JoJo. That's what she's trying to tell you. Nobody is doing it like JoJo. And honestly, I think she's right. She had a listening party that people are also clowning her for because she's kind of just like bopping around on stage with a mic, but she's not really singing the songs, which has led to speculation that she's not actually singing the songs that she's releasing, which considering that other artists have already written and recorded these songs. Like there's another song that she wrote, which actually sounded like, if I heard it in the club, I'd be like, oh, hey, like I wouldn't be like, oh, is this Jojo Siwa? But that was also written and recorded by another artist, but she sold the song and I guess Jojo Siwa picked it up. So I wouldn't be surprised if it was kind of like a JLo situation where certain vocal parts, songs were somebody else's. I mean, Jojo Siwa has made it very clear what her vocal abilities are. Another viral, video of hers when she's singing uh, Traitor by Olivia Rodrigo in the car. But you're still, you're still a traitor. Yeah, you are still a Ooh, that video, that was very hard to watch. Now that I was genuinely scared, not because it sounded bad, but I was like, please do not hurt yourself. I was like, Jojo, you are a professional singer. Or she doesn't say, she doesn't claim to be a singer. She's a performer. Either way, you're using your voice. I'm very, very scared that something bad is going to happen. Do not get the nodes, girl. You're only 20 years old. It's too, it's too early for that. Jojo, if I could give you any, any singing advice, if you're watching this, assuming you're watching this, obviously, um, subscribe. You don't have to sing it so loudly. I think people think that belting is like screaming. You don't need to squelch it. You just need to, you can project, but keep it contained. Instead of traitor, turning red um, and like singing it from, the, from the, the throat and like the full chest, you can do a bit of a mix. You can do a mixed voice where you're mixing the head and the chest voice. Now, trying to force it out of you. Okay, so we're gonna touch the belly, expand like a balloon, really engage the core, squeeze the bathroom muscles, okay? You're still a traitor. Yeah, you're just and when you feel vibrating in the back of your skull, that's good. It shouldn't be all coming from here. It should be like you're sending it from the back of your head across the room. Anyway, you're welcome for the free voice lessons. Moving on. Jojo Siwa is really like going big and not going home. Um, no, she's going home from the sex toy shop where she bought a giant penis, question mark, in her Jojo Siwa car. I don't even have commentary on that. I'm just gonna leave that as it is. You know what? I'll say one thing. She is putting her full pussy into this rebrand and I respect it, you know? It's like, if you're gonna make a splash, you might as well Make a wave. I think Miley Cyrus said, if you're gonna make them talk, might as well make them talk for two weeks and not two seconds. Oh! Yes. Oh? Cause you know what? Guess who's talking? Me and every other commentary bitch on this fucking website. She is a marketing genius. You know, I think we can give her that. Like whether or not she's genuinely trolling or not is up for debate. But I mean, she literally said as she smugly sipped on her juice and her Jojo Siwa Tesla. She's like, but y'all are still talking. What's been in your head the last three days? And she proclaims that it, karma is everyone's guilty pleasure or whatever. Number one, yes! they're the reason that it started before it even came out. <laughs> Pleasure. I don't know if it's anyone's guilty pleasure, but I wouldn't put it past them. Maybe in like a few months, people will be like ironically loving karma and then it turns into like unironically loving it. You know, it's kind of like how people hated on Addison Rae and then it was like kind of ironic to be like, oh, she's actually like serving though. And now everyone just loves Addison Rae. So I think the same thing could happen to Jojo. Assuming that she is like being for real about this, I think what's really uh, bizarre about this whole thing, aside from like, her interview moments and the music video and the costumes and the frantic erratic behavior is the fact that she's making it a really big deal and, and announcing this huge rebrand when in reality she isn't 
she hasn't really changed that much. She's still over the top eccentric with the jewels and the makeup. Like I'm really expecting her to have like a bedazzled coochie in her next video or something. And most 20 year olds, I feel like, although they haven't necessarily found themselves, of course, it's not this. Like I don't think most 20 year olds would like wanna wear the kiss cosplay get up thing and are would wanna lean more to like an adult aesthetic, adult sound. Like even Miley Cyrus wasn't doing all this. She was doing a lot, but she wasn't doing this. Speaking of Miley Cyrus, should we talk? Shall we get into Miss Miley? Who? Yeah! Shaking it like we got a strip club. Honestly, I forgot how catchy that song is. That was a good song. I enjoyed that song back in 2013. So similar to Jojo Siwa, Miley Cyrus was a child star. She was on Disney Channel. She was on the show Hannah Montana. I think we all know this. And Miley, I think, had a much more gradual transition to adulthood. Even though the Bangers era was really like in your face and like abrupt, there was, she was hinting at it for a while. I mean, I think she really started with Can't Be Tamed where she told us she couldn't be tamed. She's not a young child star who can be told what to do. She's an adult. Although I think she was like 17 in this video, but like she was an adult or at least they had her working like one. And she was in that Demi Moore movie that was like pretty edgy for the time, at least for Miley Cyrus. She was having sex and smoking pot. And then she bleached her hair, cut it all off and entered into her bangers era. Bangers, bangers, bangers. It was very, you know, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Or should I say, love, money, and party, yeah. Wait, what does she say in the song? Party ain't nothing but a party when you party every day and ain't nothing but a party. Let's get back to business now. So yes, the bangers era was iconic, but if you remember, cause we were all there, no one was really rocking with Miley like that. I mean, like some of us were, some of us were like, yes, like let your freak flag fly, Miley, ride that wrecking ball. But a lot of people were clowning her hard. Like imagine if TikTok was a thing back then, like, she'd probably be getting the Jojo Siwa treatment to be on to be honest but to give Miley credit of course like the visuals were pretty cool I remember watching the We Can't Stop music video for the first time and truly my mind was blown like I was shook and I was like wow this is crazy I didn't know Hannah had it in her like that especially because I grew up on Hannah Montana so like seeing her gyrate her body in such ways I was like whoa this is crazy I would say Miley Cyrus is was way more mature in her her music her visuals her aesthetic, the way she spoke about the album compared to Jojo Siwa, who is still giving big kid, to be honest. She's still giving big kid. And although the Bangers era had its flaws and in many ways was immature in its own right in the use of black culture and using black women as props and like she was literally cosplaying as like a black person for a while and the cultural appropriation was strong with this one and there were cringy moments in the bangers era must we go back to the vmas yeah that was tough that was a bit jarring okay even to this day watching it back not a great performance miley cyrus great singer great performer wasn't her best but that's okay she was 20 probably on molly we live and we learn we live and we love whatever even if bangers wasn't like her magnum opus, which some would argue that it was. It was a very all over the place album, but it did have hits. It had merit to it. It was listenable and appealed to an adult audience. But with Jojo Siwa, I'm not really sure who her music is for because she's trying to be more adult, but she's still making Disney songs. At least Karma is a very like Disney kind of track and she's not even fully like cursing in it. Like she's still censoring herself. So it's like, I'm not really sure. It's not for kids, but it's not for adults either. I mean, Bangers makes Jojo Siwa look like she's still got her training wheels on, whereas Miley Cyrus is riding a unicycle. <laughs> with fireworks coming out of it, you know? But yes, I think it's true that, you know, Miley kind of just went and did the thing. Jojo on the other hand was like, okay guys, get ready. I effed around, oh, you know, it's like, okay. It was a little lackluster, a little underwhelming and also overwhelming at the same time. But I wanted to talk about the trauma of it all really quick because both stars have that in common. I think they both have been through some crazy stuff when it comes to being in the limelight at such a young age and being the breadwinner of your family, which is a crazy dynamic for a child. And I think that obviously has influenced both of their behaviors in different ways. I, I mean, Jojo hasn't had like a crazy, like drug fueled, off the rails kind of moment. I was gonna use the word meltdown, but that doesn't even 
really describe what Milo was doing because she was kind of just doing what any other 20 year old was doing to be honest. Anyway, after watching the Call Her Daddy podcast, it really put some things into perspective because she has been treated like an adult being a professional in the industry pretty much her entire life since she was nine years old. But she still, I think as a kid in many ways, like she just moved out. I'm sorry, she just moved her parents out of her house. Crazy, like, dynamic right like she was living with her parents bought the house they lived there and then she's like all right guys it's time for me to live alone and they had to you know she had to give them the boot so you're keeping the house so i'm keeping the house yeah we say like it's kind of been like our like funny joke like our ongoing joke like my parents oh they're finally old enough to move out on their own like it's been like oh my god and she talks about how her girlfriend lived with her when she was 16 and like moved into her house her mom would thank her that she didn't kick them to the curb i didn't really realize till i was maybe 17 or 18 like oh oh i pay for everything for everyone. everyone like but then i was like wait i get to take care of my family i get to take care of the people that i love they gave up so much for me like my mom would always say like you would do anything for a stranger off the street right and i of course like if anybody needed anything and i could help i would and she's like so think of your family like that they're not people on the street they're your parents i don't think that's like really healthy and jojo laments about how she really just wanted a mommy mom. She didn't want a coworker. She wanted a mother. But I've been like, I need, I call it, <laughs> this is so, ew, I hate these words, but like mommy mom. And I've told, like we've had to find the dynamic. It's shockingly, it's gotten harder as I've gotten older. Yeah. But I, I've like, I want, I want you to be more my mom. Mm-hmm. And I want to be able to talk to you more about mom things than work things. And then, you know, Nick Vile. Yep. One day I was with Nick and I was ranting about things. And I was like, all my mom wants to do is talk about work. And I just want her to be my mommy, mom. Tell me, tell me what to do. And he was like, I'm never going to tell you what to do, but I am going to tell you what's going on. And he gave me the best advice I've ever received in this situation. He told me, he said that essentially I was the problem. I, I'm the one changing. She is doing what she's done her whole life. And it seems like people in her life are invalidating her for feeling that way, which doesn't make any sense to me because any child would want their mom to be a mom like I don't I don't understand that and it just sounds like really bizarre and sad to me and I don't think anyone in that dynamic can grow up normally I don't want to say Jojo Siwa isn't well adjusted but there is some strangeness there not to mention she was on Dance Mom which is literally abused children the tv show like that was not (laughs) normal or okay in any way and she defends Abby and she's like oh she was just like being a tough coach because she wanted us to be better like it wasn't that big of a deal and it's clear that she's very desensitized to inappropriate dynamics and even abuse I mean she defended Colleen Ballinger who was recently exposed for being very inappropriate with her fans who were minors like really really inappropriate stuff that like is should be illegal if it's not already the internet can take a lie and run so far with it so far that it's to the point where you just can't do anything about it she doesn't really perceive adult children dynamics properly like she doesn't see why it's inappropriate for a child to be friends with a full-grown adult like she literally said oh when i was 16 my best friend was 23 huh any 23 year olds out there are you friends with any 16 year olds comment down below and if you are like i'm blocking you but like unless that is your sibling you shouldn't be friends like that's so weird and i know she says you know i grew up really fast like i've been like essentially saying she's been an adult since she was 10 which i believe they worked her like an adult so she believes she is an adult but she's not she's not it makes me sad knowing that her childhood was like robbed from her i'm sure she would say oh i wanted to do that like i have always been about the business i've always wanted this and i knew i was meant to perform and i totally agree i feel the same way i've always felt like i was meant to entertain but i did have a childhood and i'm very very grateful that my parents didn't push me into the industry at a young age because it permanently alters your brain for the worse in most parts and she even said like oh i would rather date someone who's like 29 mind you she was born in 2003 she's 20 years old but like for me dating is like 19 but i would prefer like 22 i really just like older than me but to like 28 ooh. and so where that's different is a lot of 20 year olds are just figuring out their life which i think is why i prefer 27 28 29 
because they've got it figured out. You know what I mean? Right. I understand. And I said this in the Billie Eilish video and I have changed my mind because yes, Billie Eilish is like, she's older than 20 and she was older than 20 at the time, I think when she dated that man. But like, even though you have this like professional career and you've experienced so much, you've traveled and I get it, you don't relate to the average 21 year old. I I really understand where she's coming from with that. But it's weird as fuck for a 29 year old to want to date a 20 year old. Like that's crazy. Imagine you're like 29 at the bar with your friends and you bring Jojo Siwa with you. Like what? the hell that's wild at least with Billie Eilish she like she was a child star let's be clear about that but she wasn't Jojo Siwa not that it matters like the optics are like almost irrelevant but it is like so it is weird as fuck to be 29 and be like yeah I dated I dated 19 year old Jojo Siwa like what the hell or just a 20 year old in general like that's just not okay and I know why she thinks that and I know where she's coming from but I think it's gonna take a few years for her to be like hmm yeah that is a bit that's a bit odd. I do think the internet has gotten pretty wild with the age gaps. Like if you date someone who's like three years older than you, then it's like, oh my God, he's grooming you. And I think in that video, I was like, oh, well like girls know what they're doing when they're like dating someone who's older, but they don't actually. And I wish I hadn't worded it that way. I just meant like, let's not infantilize young women. Like they're gonna make their decisions. And the more you say, don't do it, the more they're gonna wanna do it. But yeah, you can't really perceive like the gravity of the situation when you're that young. And it's not until you're older when you realize like, oh, Oh, that's weird because I wouldn't like I wouldn't date someone who's 90 20 like that's crazy <laughs> hopefully no 29 year old is pursuing Jojo Siwa I pray and it's just it's clear to me that there's you know more life to be lived more experiences I mean she has even though she's had this crazy career she still has been sheltered in a way because it's not like she was like going to public school and like hanging out with her friends and like smoking cigarettes under the bleachers like she had a very different life than the average child. And I think the reason, assuming this isn't a big troll, the reason why she is doing this rebrand and she's doing it in this way, I would believe is because other people are kind of like putting it in her ear like, oh, you should wear this or you should do this or you don't say the F word in the song because she's been told what to do her entire life. Like she's been under management and agencies and networks, executives her whole life. She is a performance machine. And when you're a machine, you don't really make decisions for yourself, especially when you're a child. And I would imagine because she's made so much money for so many people, especially her family, she's got all these yes people around her being like oh yeah this is great you are the next Elvis actually you are literally inventing a new genre of music no one's ever done it like you before Jojo Siwa thank you also for paying my rent like I, I don't know if I'd be fully honest with someone who's funding my entire life if her mom was literally like on her hands and knees being like thank you for not making me homeless do you really think she's gonna be like I don't know about this one I don't know if this is I don't know if this is a bop you know like I don't know if people are looking out for her in that way I think a lot of this comes from her unorthodox upbringing and maybe some trauma that she experienced in the past and we see that in her controversies with this like xomg pop group that she assembled and maybe i'll go deeper into that on patreon and like the allegations of it all the allegations kind of reminded me of what happened on dance moms and i would imagine her and her mother are like continuing that cycle because they think that's what is necessary to be successful and they think this kind of behavior is appropriate and normal when it's really not and joe Jojo, if you're watching this, I'm so sorry. Keep doing you, girl. You're way richer than me. Jojo Siwa is richer and more famous than I'll probably ever be. And that brings me so much anguish and pain and jealousy. This whole video is just me being jealous. Disclaimer, I'm just jealous because damn, if I could just get a fraction of her, of her clout, I would, I would be happy. Cause you know, I think every musician feels this way a little bit. Like a part of me is like, get your bag, but also like, damn, it's crazy how like there are talented people in this world who will never have that level of success. Ain't that some shit. Maybe one day. I believe ugh, manifesting it, I will be big pop star like Jojo Siwa. Go stream I Killed My Clone out now on all streaming platforms. So yeah, thank you for watching and uh, don't F around. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah.